Okay, another one of Frank's tools over at City Astro ported over by one of the developers at Serial into a Python script for us to use. And this one's called Statistical Stretch. It's pretty much a one-click stretch your image Python script. There are a few settings that you need to understand before using it, but it's super simple. It's a nice, quick and easy way to do that initial stretch to your image, and you may even be happy with it afterwards and not want to do any more stretching. So I think this is going to be a pretty popular script. So let's check it out. My name is Rich, and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So first thing we need to do is get the statistical stretch script installed. So we're going to come over to our burger menu, click on get scripts. Down in the bottom is the list of all the available scripts. Look for a statistical stretch and just put a tick mark in the box to the right and click apply. And if we come up into scripts, just to verify under Python scripts, there's the statistical stretch script. So I have already stacked some images to use as an examples here, and we're gonna start with M51. You can see right now I'm in a linear view, so it has not been stretched at all. If we come up into auto stretch, just to show you what it looks like. So I am just going to do a quick crop of the image. And then a background extraction, we'll just use Graxpert in this case. And I want to do some color correction as well, so I need the plate solve first. And then we'll come up into color calibration and SPCC and color correct the image. So now I'm ready to stretch the image. I'm going to come out of auto stretch and go back into linear. And again, script, Python scripts, and statistical stretch. So let's first talk about the settings that we have available to us. The target median is just that the desired target median that we want for our image. Frank has said that for uh, galaxies, planetary nebula, stuff that does not fill the entire field of view in your image, that a good starting value is around 0.1. And since this is M51, that's what we're going to start with. Our next option is the link stretch. So with this option disabled, its default state, it will stretch each of the individual color channels within the image, so R, G, and B. When it's selected, it'll stretch all three of them at the same time, so equal amounts of a stretch. Now, as you saw, I did color correction, so because of that, I wanna make sure that I do a linked stretch, otherwise, I'm gonna lose my color correction. It's not gonna ruin the image, but the colors will not be as accurate as they were previous to actually doing that unlinked stretch. So again, we color corrected, so we're gonna use the link stretched. Normalize gives you full dynamic range so you can get the max amount of contrast out of your image. I'll leave that enabled as well. That generally isn't too much of a noticeable difference. You can go back and forth and see which way you like it, but it's, it's subtle. And then apply curves adjustment. We'll do just that. It's kind of like if we came up into image processing stretches and our curves transformation, and we started messing with the curves ourselves that's what that option is going to do for you. But again, based on the statistics of the image. So the higher this value, the more contrast you'll get in your image and it'll help you pull out more faint details, but it can also introduce some noise and some artifacts too. So again, one of those things you just have to play with. We'll just set it, I don't know, about 0.16 and then click apply. So, and there's our stretch. Again, we can go back into our settings. So if I wanted to, I could drop down my curves boost a little bit and then just click apply again. And if you watch the screen, you should see the difference. And you see it brighten it up a little bit. Uh, same thing with your target median. So you can adjust this on the fly as well and then just run it again. So you can go back and forth with the sliders, any of the options. Again, like I said, if you color corrected, you want to leave your link stretch selected. But let's, so let me show you guys what's going to happen with the link stretch. If I was to stretch this unlinked after color correcting, so you can see what the difference is. So I'm going to bump my target median back down to around 0.10. 0.11, good enough. The curves boost. We'll hit apply just so we can get a, a before image. And I'm just going to take a screenshot so we could bring it back up and look at it again. And so now if I untick link stretch and then hit apply, again, it doesn't ruin the data. You may not even notice it, but if we bring this back over and compare it to the one that was a link stretched, so my screenshot here is a link stretched and the one in serial is the unlinked stretch. There is a difference in the colors between the two. So just be aware of that, just wanted to point it out. So we'll go back into a link stretch. And at this point, 
we can close the script and you know if you like the end results if they look good to you and you're happy with it then you can be done with your stretching that's completely up to you it's really intended to be a good initial stretch for you so once you run the script you could always come up into one of your stretching algorithms i use generalized hyperbolic stretch and you can further stretch this some more. So if you want to do little iterations again to brighten certain things up, you know, and setting your symmetry points to make adjustments, your local stretch intensity, the, the script gives you a good starting point for everything. Now, as far as GHS is concerned, I do have a video on that. I'll leave it down in the description for you guys if you're not familiar with this. But this script is kind of intended for the people that are still learning GHS, maybe haven't even looked at it yet. This can have quite a learning curve to it to be pretty proficient with it. So the statistical stretch script gets you to a very good starting point without needing to know how to use GHS. Again, you don't have to use GHS. If you want to try and tweak it again, you can come into your stretches and you can use your histogram transformation, right? And you can adjust your midpoints and make adjustments that way. And even though we did have it do a curve boost for us, uh, you can come back into your curves transformation and you know you can do your standard little S curve and try and tweak your final image that way as well. Absolutely up to you, nothing wrong with doing it that way. So let's jump into my next image, which is the rosette. And everything's the same, but just to give you guys a visual on how some of these settings work, there's my auto stretch view. And again, just like before, we're gonna give it a crop, do a quick background extraction with Graxpert and plate solve it so we can color correct it. And then go into our SPCC. This one I shot with my narrow band. All right, so now we're color corrected again back into the script. Like I said before, Frank over at SETI Astro said 0.1 is a good starting point for galaxies. For nebula that fill up most of your field of view, right? So we've got nebula pretty much in this entire field of view, even some faint stuff over here where it looks like just a background sky. A good starting point for that would be about 0.25. And again, we color corrected, so we're gonna say a link stretch. I'm gonna normalize it. Curves adjustment, we'll just bump that up a little bit, maybe about 0.12. Drop down into linear so we can see the end results without the auto stretch on top of it. And then click apply. So there's our stretched image. Like I said, you could be happy with this and continue on with the rest of your workflow. Or you can jump into the other stretching tools and try and tease out the data even more. So one more example. And we're going to open up this image here. Same thing, this is an image that when I stacked it, I did not use the RGB equalization. That's why it looks so green. So down by the auto, we're in the auto stretch view and to the right of it is a linked and unlinked button. Currently we're linked. If I was to unlink it, then we get a better, more expected view of what we were, what we were looking for. All I'm gonna do to this one is just give it a quick crop and we'll link them again so we get all that pretty green going on. But again, back up in the scripts, we'll run statistical stretch. I'm going to bump this back down to around 0.10 again. Then this would be an instance where you'd want to leave links stretched unchecked. That way it'll stretch each of the individual channels separately. If I just hit link stretch, and we'll leave the other two off because we're just talking. I just wanted to show you the difference between linked and unlinked when you have an image that is not equalized like this. If I was to drop back into my linear view and then hit apply with link stretch selected, you can see our image is not as green, but it's still green because it's stretched RGMB equal amounts. And in this instance, we don't want it to do that. So if I was to unlink it and hit apply, now it did each individual channel separately. And that's the image that we're looking for, right? None of that green. Everything's been equalized out and, and stretched based again on the statistics of the image. The other use case for doing an unlinked stretch are for those of you that are shooting in mono and you're, you've assembled uh, an SHO image, for example, and you've already combined S, H, and O together into your final stack. Obviously, you'd want to do an unlinked stretch on that data as well. Otherwise, you would lose your whole SHO palette. And the last example I want to show you, we'll just close the script, is working on starless data. So a lot of you remove the stars before you actually do any stretching, myself included. So the script works the same way as it does on starless data. So that's our auto stretch view. So I'm gonna go back into linear and we'll run the script one more time, make our necessary adjustments, give it a little bit of a curve boost, hit apply. 
and business as usual, right? So you can absolutely use this in the same workflow that you're currently using if you are removing your stars first, stretching your data, doing the rest of your workflow, and then recombining the stars back into the final image. So there you go, another great tool from SETI Astro. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments or if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. Before we go, I just wanna say thanks to all my members, both here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks to all of you for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. It's all very much appreciated. So that's a wrap for this video. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.